not dead. Oh, hallelujah, he's not dead. But I was. You might see me talking. You might see me walking. You might see me as the walking dead with a talking head and a coffin dead. But it's often said that I lost and bled so we all can shed what has costed man in a sovereign plan. So who am I to produce a vibe to get you to choose a side, the truth and lies dressed up in a suit and tie, but who would choose to die to remove the lies that people would choose to buy? It's suicide because Easter bunnies have nothing to do with Christ. Yes, Lord. Separate Easter from Ishtar, from Isis and People would discard the righteous that we would admit God would like us to seek what is his heart and find it because some of us haven't been to church since last Easter. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not over because the resurrection of what God told us because he never left us. See, he would come down to divine, to design a movement that was divine and proven and whether or not we would decide to use it, he would still die and use it to define the truth and provide the youth and old with a savior of the world that came out of the tribe of Judah. So did I. So don't come up to me and just say something like Happy Easter. Instead say, He has risen. Because my savior, your savior, our savior came back from the dead so did I. He's not dead, but I was. Dear church, we are severely underselling Jesus' work on the cross and the miracle of the resurrection. We love to talk about his birth, his ministry here on the earth, but when it comes to his death, when all the breath was taken from his chest and he was left motionless as his mother wept, well, we kind of like skip over that. And it's because of that we fail to realize what the resurrection actually meant, what it means today for us, for you right now. It is through the resurrection that we know life is stronger than death. Love stronger than hate, hope stronger than despair. We know the resurrection fully renewed the relationship between you and the creator. And it's not because anything we have done, it is all because of the death of his son. When Jesus walked out of that grave, he made it so we will never be enslaved. He put all of our sins on that cross. So with that, I say this. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I have left myself exposed and vulnerable to today's world, but excuse my actions because I was just a lonely soul looking for something to make me whole, but little did I know you were always there calling me home so I didn't have to roam. Thank you for your unconditional love. Loving me when I couldn't even love myself. When I looked in the mirror and didn't have anything nice to say, you looked at me and said I'm perfect in every way. Thank you for being the one I call father when I didn't have one to call me his daughter. Thank you for protecting me from all the things that I couldn't see. Lord, I can't wait to walk through the heaven gates. I wasn't thinking about heaven's gates. See, I was shooting hoops through milk crates, dubbing cassette tapes, dreaming about being one of hip-hop's greats. But I only had a little. Pero yo quiero más y más y más. Translation, I wanted more and more and more, but you could be sure that more was never quite enough. See, I wanted more rings and gold and sneakers. I wanted more rims and amps and speakers. I wanted more girls and friends and popularity. I wanted more money, more knowledge, more clarity. And I achieved all that stuff. And you know what? It left me even more confused. I felt empty. I felt dirty. I felt used. See, I achieved more, but I was always looking for the rest. 
because that feeling of satisfaction always seemed to escape me. I couldn't rest. I was the walking dead at best. I had this knot in my chest. Can I be honest, y'all? I was a hot mess. But then I had an encounter with the Creator and I started to confess. He became more and I became less. He took my burdens and stress. He gave me breath. And then I crossed over to life from death. If you cross over to life from death, make some noise in this place. If you've had a spiritual resurrection because of his resurrection, make some noise. Yeah. Woo. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We're so glad you guys are here in the building, in the house with us. Again, I'm Pastor Tommy, the, the lead pastor. And so, uh, man, if this is your first Easter or if it is your 22nd, like me. Yeah, I've been here for 22 years as one of the pastors. Yeah, I know y'all like, what, really? Yeah, I'm older than you think. Yeah. So I want to welcome you guys today. If you're here for the first time, seriously, like get one of those orange bags. Come up to me. I'd love to meet you. And if, maybe if this is your 10th, 20th, or 200th time to be here at Crossover, definitely come up and say hello. And uh, Crossover fam, let's give all of our VIP guests, let's give them a hand one more time. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Hey, listen, when service is over, don't be in a hurry because it's going to be a big party in the lobby. We got free food. Does anybody like free food? Come on. We got waiters and waitresses that are going to be walking around. They're all dressed up. They're going to serve you all kinds of different special delights that we have for y'all. And we have three photo stations. So get some family pictures, some pictures with your friends because you know what? Y'all look good. Y'all look good today. I'm checking you out. This is a beautiful view up here. Yeah. Look at the person next to you and say, you look good. Okay, now look at the person on the other side that felt left out and say, you look even better. Somebody just met their husband. They just met their wife. You're welcome. You're welcome. I got you. Listen, today we're going to be talking about how the resurrection of Jesus can lead to a spiritual resurrection in our lives. And we're going to look at one passage of scripture today uh, that my man Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2. And so if you could stand with me, we're going to read that together as we open up Ephesians chapter 2. You got your Bible, your Bible app. We're going to put it on the screens for you as well. And Paul wrote this right at the beginning of the chapter. He said this, talking about being made alive with Christ. He said, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He's the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our spiritual nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Somebody say, but God. Come on, say, but God. but God. I love verse 4. It says, but God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were still dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all the future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he's done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Look at verse 8. It says, God saved you by his grace when you what? When you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. Did you know you're God's masterpiece? At the very beginning of this worship experience, we sang about that in the opening piece. And we had my man CJ over here painting this masterpiece on this canvas. But you know what? Each one of you are a canvas. You're a masterpiece. 
God has a plan for your life. He's got a purpose for your life. He's got things for you to accomplish that nobody else on this planet can. You're God's masterpiece. It says he created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Pray with me. Let's talk to God. God, again, we come before you today and we thank you for your word. We thank you for the gospel, the good news that even though all of us have been dead, we can come alive in Christ. God, again, I believe it's no accident. It's not by chance that anybody's here today, but this is a divine appointment for many, many people today. This is a affirmation. It's a reminder for many people as well. And Father, I pray today that you're gonna speak to each one of us in different ways. And God, I believe there's gonna be many, many people here that are gonna have a spiritual resurrection that's gonna change their eternity. So God, just use every moment of the rest of this worship experience and use me in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Before you're seated real quick, like, look at the person next to you. Give him a high five and say, he's alive. He's alive. Yeah. So Crossover, how y'all feeling today? Y'all good? Yeah. For real, y'all looking good. The house is full today, man. We're celebrating Jesus. I want to also say what's up to the over a 1,000 people that are worshiping with us online. Everybody say what's up to them. Yeah. We love you guys at home and from all over the world. Hey, also, if you didn't hear, Crossover Church is launching another location in 2018. That's right. We're launching Crossover Atlanta. Crossover ATL. Yeah. So I want to give a huge shout out because there's a team of about 30 people or so from the launch team at Crossover Atlanta, and uh, Pastor Scott and his wife Tammy are here, the pastors of that, that new location that we're opening up. So let's give it up for the Atlanta team. They're serving in kids' ministry and some of them around. So if you see them, make them feel welcome. Yeah. So, hey, if you're here or you're worshiping online, if you could pull out your smartphone, Pull it out real quick. Yeah, you can use your phone at Crossover. Not to be on Facebook, unless you're posting a picture. A quick IG video or something. That's cool. Uh, listen, uh, if you could go to the App Store, if you don't have our app, Crossover Church. We have uh, over 1,400 people now that have downloaded the app in the last couple of months. So download the app, and I want to encourage you guys, follow along and take some notes. There's this really cool little feature on there. You can take notes and type it in. You can email it to yourself. A lot of other cool features on there as well. Uh, or if you're old school, that's okay. We love you. It's all good. We got some old school people or some old souls. If you like to take notes with a pencil and, and pen or whatever and paper, um, inside of your program, if you pull that out, the program you got when you came in the door, there's a note sheet, uh, and you can write down some notes as well. Uh, so did you know that if you take notes, research shows that you are four times more likely to remember what you just heard? So take some notes today. Resurrection Sunday, it's, it's super important. So today I want to talk to you about this spiritual resurrection uh, that we can have because of the resurrection of Jesus. And, and so here, here's the thing, y'all. I, I got to make a confession today. I got a problem. I have a problem. And you know what? You have a problem too. And you do, and you do, Danny, and you do, Bernie, you have a problem. Uh, you have a problem, you know it too, you have a problem over there, uh, Roberto, you have a problem, man. We all have a problem, okay? You know what our problem is? Here's our problem, write this down. We are dead in our sin. We're dead in our sin. We're dead, we can't do anything about it. We're born with this sin nature. We're born this way. Verse 3 in Ephesians chapter 2, it even says it's our very nature. We're, we're attracted to the wrong type of stuff, Right? It feels good. We want, we want to do these things that are bad. If, if we didn't, I mean, we wouldn't sin, right? But we, we're attracted to it. And many times we don't even realize that we're spiritually dead. There was a season of my life where I was spiritually dead. And at first, I really didn't even realize it. I thought I was just having a good time. I thought I was just having fun. But the reality was I was spiritually dead. And here's the thing, y'all. I actually grew up in church. I had to go to church, and I believed in God but there was no real relationship as I became a teenager. There was no repentance. There was no me really trying to follow God's plan. 
and, and my mission that he had for my life. I was just wanting to do my own thing. I was dead in my sin. And so when I became an older teenager, that rebellious season, it started to grow more. And I started working at this retail store. And I was selling clothes. And so every time a new shipment of clothes would come in, I would take some. Steal it. And I would try to reason with myself, well, you know, they really don't pay me enough, and, you know, they ain't going to notice this. You know how we do, right? You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just fighting against the man, you know. Uh, you know, I look better in this anyway. You know, all, I, I was doing all that stuff. And so soon I had literally piles and piles of clothes, and I was still living with my parents at the time, and I had to, like, make up all these stories about where all this stuff was coming from. My closet was overflowing, Right? My dresser had clothes. Oh, man, you know, that, that's my friends. Or, you know, oh, this was on sale. Or, you know, oh, at the store, they just had so much stuff. They gave me this whole pile of clothes. You know, it was lies on top of lies on top of lies. Have you ever lied so much that you forgot the lie before and you got mixed up? You don't have to raise your hand. No confessions right now. That, that was me. I confess. Like, that was me. And so... But even with all the latest fashions and trends and stuff that I had, guess what? It still didn't make me come alive. I still didn't feel like, oh, yes. But I, I thought it was going to, right? You heard of my spoken word, like, like satisfaction always seemed to escape me. I was always still looking for the rest, and I couldn't rest because I was just trying to find it. And I'm like, well, there, there's something else I'm going to get. Well, there's another party. Well, there's another girl. Well, there's another something that I just haven't achieved yet because I was still empty and I was still searching. I, I couldn't quite find it. I couldn't put my finger on it. And soon I realized that all this stuff that I was stealing and wearing, I was trying to impress people that I didn't know, I didn't like, and they didn't care. And we do that, don't we, right? It's pointless. So soon I realized, like, I am spiritually dead. Like, what is the, the point of all this? I can't find and he satisfaction in my life. I realized I was dead in my sins, just like Paul talked about in Ephesians 2 that we just read. I mean, Satan was working in my life, and I was just chasing after my own passions and desires, and there was no satisfaction. I was stuck. But God. Somebody say, but God. <laughs> but God, like it said in verse 4, in his rich mercy. Loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when Christ rose from the dead. So our problem is we're dead in our sins. But guess what? When there's a problem, there needs to be what? A solution. And here's his solution because we can't fix it. Here's his solution. Write this down. We can come alive in Christ. I love the way the Message Bible breaks down verse 6. It says this. It says, he took our sin-dead lives and he made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and he set us down in the highest heaven in company with Jesus, our what? Our Messiah. So you know what? My dead life continued as I became an older teenager and I was in this rebellious season. And so I was searching for happiness and, and a purpose and I couldn't find one. So I made a deal with God. Anybody here ever made a deal with God? How'd that work out for you? So my deal with God was this. I said, God, I will go to Bible college the first year and, and dedicate that to you. And then, you know, just let me do whatever I want. I'll figure it out. And so, you know, I thought I had it all planned out. Went to Bible college that first semester. And guess what? I was worse than I ever was before because I wasn't at home anymore. I was out from under the umbrella of my parents, like, watching me and, you know, all those things. So I was going to clubs. I was partying. I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. Did you know there's a wrong crowd at Bible college? There is. I'm telling you. There's some bad people at Bible college. There is. It's that, I was, like, I was the ringleader. So <laughs> there's people at Bible college that actually cheat on tests. I was one of them. But I did draw the line. I did not cheat on Bible tests. It was math or English, but not Bible. I had some friends of mine, they were cheating on Bible tests. I'm like, bro, you better slow that down. The lightning might strike you or something, you know. You can't, you know, cheating on Old Testament, like, you know, class. Like, man. But so there I was at Bible college, and I was still searching and still 
and second semester, God got a hold of me. It was a, it was a Monday morning after I'd kind of partied all weekend with my friends, and I was at this mandatory chapel service. Notice the word mandatory, right? <laughs> so I didn't really want to be there. But I'm at this chapel service, and there's a lot of people there. They're excited about God. I mean, there's people there that, that have their hands up, and there's people there that are worshiping. And, man, they're excited to be at church that morning. And I'm just like, oh, man. And I felt really disconnected. And I know there might be some of you that are here today, and maybe somebody dragged you here to church, or you just kind of came out of tradition because it's Easter, and, and you're watching some of the people around you with their hands up, and they're excited, and they're clapping, and they're engaged to be here, and you just, you can't really understand that. That's just not you. Well, guess what? That, that, was, how, that was how I felt. As I sat in that service, and I'm watching all these people around me, and they're worshiping God, I just couldn't quite connect with it. But in the middle of that moment, God began to speak to me. God began to breathe life into my spiritually dead self. He began to speak life into me and purpose. And right there in the middle of that chapel service, nobody laid hands on me. Nobody prayed for me. But I had a spiritual resurrection right there in that service. And I believe today that there's going to be hundreds of people here at Crossover Church that are going to have a spiritual resurrection. God is going to get a hold of you. He's going to speak life into you, breathe life into you. You'll never be the same. And I can point back to that day that since then I've never been the same. It hasn't been perfect. There's been ups and downs as there is with life. Jesus never promises it's going to be perfect, but he promises he'll be there right by your side. And he's been there by my side through ups and downs and through tragedies and times when I stumbled and fell, he was there every step of the way. And I'm telling you today, he'll be there with you every step of the way. All you have to do is have that faith and say, yes, I believe. Yes, I want to follow. Yes, God, here I am. Take my life. Make something out of it. And I can point back since that day, God has done things in my life that have blown my mind. I didn't go on my first plane until I was 19 years old. I went on a plane, not my plane, but a plane, right? I've never been on a plane ride. I'm just a low-income kid from the city. We never went anywhere, right? We went to grandmoms for vacation generally, right? So I went on a plane when I was 19. I would never dreamt or imagine that since then, fast forward, I've been on over 1,000 planes traveling all over the country and all over the world, teaching and preaching and doing my music and sharing how the resurrection of Jesus gave me a spiritual resurrection, and my life hasn't been the same. So if you're here today, and you're on the fence, and you're like, well, if I really, like, commit to this thing, then I got to stop doing this and that, and, you know, Christians are boring, and my life's going to be boring, man, you are the, far, you're the farthest thing from correct, I'm telling you, because my life is far from boring. I'm alive now. There's adventures. There's new things that come every single day when you give your life to Jesus. He'll allow you to do things that will blow your mind. I got, a, got a witness in the house. Has anybody experienced the excitement of coming alive in Christ, coming alive in Jesus? Man, it's, it's incredible. So uh, each one of us, you know what? We have a different resurrection story, each one of us. And maybe you can't fully connect with mine, but there's somebody out there that you could be like, man, I, I, if that person can change, then, then I can change. So I want to tell you two other spiritual resurrection stories today. One is from 2,000 years ago. It was a Samaritan woman that was at the well. And another is from a brother right here from our church who was a gangbanger, caught up doing all kinds of things, but he found a spiritual resurrection, and God did something incredible in his life. I want you to listen to his story. <laughs> My story begins uh, growing up in a middle class family in the suburbs of Boston. Uh, at the age of 10, I, uh, my parents divorced and we ended up moving to the city. This is when things started going downhill for me. I started getting in trouble, uh, hanging out in the neighborhood, and eventually joining a gang. I was doing a lot of things that I shouldn't have, like jumping people, selling drugs, even stealing cars. This is where things um, just wasn't going right. I thought it was cool. I thought it was all about that life. Every time I tried to rise in these things that I should have been doing, uh, the Lord has uh, shut them down and wasn't allowing any growth in it. 
There's an instance that sticks out to me still to this day. I was in trial for a stolen car, and the judge threw the case out. She removed everyone from the courtroom and said to my co-defendants, uh, you better thank him, and she was talking about me, that you guys are going home today. She said that the spirit told her that I cannot go to jail. I didn't know at the time what she was talking about, but now I do. I got into trouble several more times for more serious things like assault and battery, dangerous weapon, and even attempted murder. I beat all my cases, never went to jail. Um, I guess I had God's hand in my life, and people used to tell me that I had favor and grace. I still didn't understand what they were telling me at the time. Around this time, I already had dropped it out of school, had my second child, and started working at an AC company. I ended up starting my own company at the age of 21. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I said I was gonna do it. Fast forward to 2008, the housing market crashed, and I lost everything. I ended up moving to Tampa and working for an AC company here in Tampa. As I was servicing uh, customers' homes, they kept on asking me to go to church with them. Eventually I said, I'll go, and I did. So in 2015, I gave myself to the Lord to start a relationship with Him. I am currently married with six children, ages 21 to 2. I am a proud grandfather of twin uh, granddaughters. I have a growing and successful company, which is Red Carpet Air. I employ over 20 people. So I just want to say this. Whatever situation you're in, if it's big or small, or if you feel like you're lost and there's no way, just know that there is a way and that God has his hand on your life just like he had his hand on my life. So if God can resurrect me and give me life, he can resurrect you and give you life too. Thank you. We have a problem. God has a solution. But even beyond that, so, so why does God do that? Why, does, why did God give his son Jesus? First of all, he loves us. Even if we've messed up, even if we've done dirt, he loves us so much. He has incredible grace and love for us. And he has a plan for us. 
And that's the, the big thing. He has a plan. So what's his plan? Write this down. Here's, here's God's plan. It's for us to do good works. Verse 10 in the Message Bible, I love the way it, it says it. It says this. It says, he creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work that he does. You see that? We get to join God. Like we get to partner up with the creator of the universe to do good works. It says the good work, each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. You know what, this past week, there was over a thousand people that did some good works right here in this community as we did Love Our City Week. Yeah. There was people exactly following God's plan. There was all these people that had a spiritual resurrection because of the resurrection of Jesus, and they experienced his love. So they said, man, I want to go out and love my city. I want to love other people. I want to show them the love of, of, of Jesus in a tangible way, in a practical way. And we had 100 projects planned, but there were so many of y'all that showed up. We had to add projects. I don't even know what the total number is. Uh, it's like 100 and something right now, right? We, we kept adding more because there were so many people that wanted to come and serve. It, it was just, it was incredible. I actually got to serve on 10 projects this week. So I was out there getting it in. And even just me personally, all the stories I saw. When we showed up at some people's houses and just knocked on the door, showed up with a bag of groceries, there were some people that had been praying for food. There were some people that had been praying that God would show up with a sign. Boom, and there we were. I mean, again and again, there's so many incredible stories that have come out of Love Our City Week. I got to pray with several people. Lots of us did. There was people that started asking me deep spiritual questions, and we're having these conversations right out on the street. I ran into this kid that I hadn't seen in 19 years, and he used to come to the church back when, he was the youth, when I was the youth pastor, and he vividly remembered me and other people and, and stuff that happened. And he's in a place where he's just spiritually searching. We exchange information and, and pray. I'm going to be meeting with him in the next couple of weeks. He's on a spiritual search right now. There was so many seeds that were planted. The very first project of the week I actually did, we went to the bus terminal. And we gave out like 100 bus passes. And I met this guy from, that just moved here from Miami named Derek. And he was at the 9 a.m. service. Yeah. There's just so many seeds that were planted. I know there's some of you that are here today because you got touched this week or you saw it online. I mean, it was actually trending in Tampa on Google and some of the different social media platforms because so many people were posting stuff about it. It was amazing. So I want to show you guys, if you weren't around this week or even if you were, I want to show you some highlights and I want to celebrate what God did in Love Our City 2018. Check this out. However young you are, you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation in which to live. You have a responsibility to seek to make life better for everybody. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the host of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. <laughs> if you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. If you served at Love Our City this week, I want you to stand up right now. I want you to stand up. I want to celebrate you for a minute. Give it up for all these people that served this week. Stay standing for a minute. Stay standing. 
I just want to, like, take a moment and celebrate you guys. I want to brag on my church for a second, all right? Is that okay? I know we got guests in the house, but I believe we have the greatest people in the world that serve here that are part of this family. I mean, just look around this room and you see a beautiful masterpiece that's multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multi-class, super diverse. How many of y'all know this is what heaven's going to look like? This is what the church is supposed to look like. When we truly love your city and you love everyone and everyone's welcome no matter what their background is. So here at Crossover, you know what? We're not colorblind. We're color blessed. We're blessed to have people of all different colors and ethnic backgrounds. And, and man, it's just a beautiful thing, y'all. And there were so many of these people that are standing up that gave hours and hours this week and gave of their time and of their talent. And then there's hundreds of families here that financially gave to help fund Love Our City. And they were generous because it was tens of thousands of dollars that we poured into the community in the past week. And we had several great sponsors as, as well. So give it up for these people one more time. We love y'all. Y'all can be seated. So, so I don't know. Maybe you're here today and you're new and you're just checking it out and you're looking for a church. I just want to say, like, welcome home. Like, come on, come Come be part of this movement. We're not a perfect church. There is no perfect church. But, I mean, God is doing some incredible, amazing things here. Now, I also know that there's some of you that you're just here because somebody dragged you here. Or maybe you're just here because it's Easter and you're like, it's Resurrection Sunday. Well, I'll come to church, you know. And, and you're expecting maybe something big to happen today. And something big is going to happen for some of you, I believe. But I, but I want to challenge you with this. Like, don't just come today. Like, if you really want to watch God work in your life, give church a try. Come back. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. Come this entire month of April. Next Sunday, we're starting this series called This Is How We Do It. Montel Jordan's going to be in the building. It's going to be incredible. We're going to be talking about relationships. We're going to be talking about family. We're going to be talking about marriage. And how many of y'all know we need to talk about that? Because it's busted and broken. We've been trying to do it our own way. Let's look at what God has to say about how we should do it. So I challenge you, just come for this month of April and see if God doesn't do something different in your life. Watch the change. And I know some of you are here and you have church hurt and you have baggage and, and all this stuff that might have happened somewhere else. And no church is perfect, but, but give Crossover a try. Because I've been through some church hurt. I've seen some stuff. And we've been very intentional to strip a lot of that stuff away here to keep it down to the word of God and doing what we're supposed to do. Loving God and loving our city and discipling people and leading them to Jesus. So stick around, y'all. Stick around. Make some noise for all these people one more time. So, so why do we do this? Why do we love our city? Why do we do it? Here's why. Because our creator loved us so much that 2,000 years ago, he sent his only son, Jesus, down here to the earth. And Jesus came and he had this humble existence of just being a carpenter. And he experienced what life was like, the ups, the downs, all those things. And when he was 30 years old, he started his ministry. And for three years, he touched literally thousands and thousands of people as he went to all these different places and he taught and miracles happened. But then Jesus was arrested and he was falsely accused and he was beaten and he was whipped, his beard pulled out crown of thorns put on his head and then he gave us the greatest act of love anybody could ever give he allowed himself he's the creator of the universe he could have stopped all of it but he allowed himself to be hung up on a cross for my mistakes for your mistakes for my sins for your sins for for our problems that we talked about right and he hung there and people mocked him and made fun of him and spit on him. And he still just hung there and he took it. As he was bleeding and suffocating from not being able to breathe and trying to push himself up. Whew. He did that for me. He did that for you. So we could have a spiritual resurrection. But y'all, that's not where the story ends. I said that's not where the story ends. Because three days later, he rose, he resurrected, that tombstone rolled away. He came up out of that grave. Jesus is alive. And if you believe that, he can change your family. 
He could change your life. He could change your path. He could resurrect your marriage. He could resurrect your finances. He could resurrect that dead dream that you had. He could bring it back to life. That's what my Jesus can do. All you have to do is believe. Believe and trust and have faith. And I know that's hard. I was a skeptic, even though I was raised in church. That, that was my parents' faith, but I had to figure it out for myself. I encourage you, do some research. Not from YouTube, <laughs> from some real documented sources. You'll find that the Bible is historically accurate. Jesus was a historical figure that lived. He had a ministry. Thousands of people followed him. He did miracles. He turned his culture upside down. And he was crucified on a cross. And three days later, he resurrected. You'll find that. Not just in the scriptures, but in other history that has been written. In extra biblical sources. Like, it's, it's fact. It's proven. And there was over 500 people that saw the resurrected Jesus. Because listen, if the resurrection didn't happen, y'all, then we can't have a spiritual resurrection. We could just pack up and go home. What are we celebrating today? Everything hinges on the resurrection. Over 500 people saw the resurrected Jesus at several different points in those 40 days before he ascended back into heaven. Many of those people were martyred. They were killed because of what they believed. They did not denounce Jesus and that they saw the resurrected Jesus. Listen, if it wasn't real, somebody would have cracked. Ain't nobody going to die for a lie. Y'all feel me? Not, not dozens and hundreds of people. They're not going to die for a lie. They saw, they were eyewitnesses that saw the resurrected Jesus. So I believe. And not just from that evidence that you can look up, but I, I believe because of the evidence, because I've seen people like, like Ted. I've seen people like Danny. I've seen people like Roberto. I've seen myself, my own life. I'm not the person I used to be. I've had this spiritual resurrection. God has changed me. He can change you. You just have to believe and follow and trust. So here it is today, y'all. It's real simple. One simple thing is our goal today. All, all the music, the dancing, the arts, the, the kids' stuff that we're doing today, the photos, the food, all that it all boils down to. Here's our one desire at Crossover Church today is that there's people here that can have a spiritual resurrection. You can get a connection back with your creator and have a relationship with Jesus, and you can come spiritually alive. I want to pray with you today. If you bow your heads around the room, if everyone could just be still for a moment, this holy moment. I know God is talking to some people today. He's tugging on some hearts. He's tapping you on the shoulder. Maybe you're feeling something you've never felt before. You're feeling something you haven't felt in a long time. Some of you have never had a relationship, an authentic, genuine relationship with your creator. Maybe you've believed, but there's been no relationship. Maybe you've never believed. Maybe you were connected to God at one time, but you fell off and strayed away. But God drew you here today to speak to you. He's saying, come home, come home. So I want to pray with you today, if that's you. If that's you, as everybody's heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you want to pray that prayer with me, just slip your hand up real quick. Just let me know that. I see you. I see hands up all over this room, front and back. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful. I see you. God sees you. God sees you if you're at home, online, worshiping with us as well. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I invite you. This isn't some magic formula. Make this your heart's cry and just say, God, these are my words. This is my heart. I want you. Pray this with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I admit I have a problem, but I realize you have the solution. And I thank you for your son, Jesus, that you sent. I believe he died on the cross for my sins, my mistakes, my dirt. And that three days later, he rose again. And because of that, 
I can have a spiritual resurrection. I can become new. I can come alive. And that's what I ask for today. I ask you to forgive me. I'm sorry. I tried to do it my own way. But I'm committing today. I want to follow you and your plan for my life to do good works and spread your message. So thank you for loving me, giving me another chance, and bringing me here today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Give Jesus some praise today. Make some noise for him. Hallelujah. Come on, if you enjoyed that experience today, come on, clap your hands and make some noise, somebody. Yeah! Jesus lives. I'm going to ask everybody to remain seated for just a moment. We want to give a couple instructions before we dismiss you today. First of all, let me say thank you so much. I'm Pastor Christopher, the executive pastor here. We're very, very honored that all of you were here today. Let me also apologize to many of you because you came in today and you had to wait for a moment for seats and for us to get seats out for you. It's a great problem to have, but I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for your patience and for being willing to put up with us getting settled and getting you seated uh, while we were navigating that. I want to give a huge shout out uh, to our first impressions folks and all of our volunteers. Come on, can you guys clap for them and celebrate them? Incredible job today. Incredible job today. So I can tell you as a, as a dad to a brand new newborn that you don't want to bring that baby home, kiss the baby, lay it on the bed, and then just leave it to raise itself. You want to make sure that that baby is also supported and loved to be able to grow to its maximum capacity and potential. Well, just like the way we would do that with our natural babies as a church, we want to make sure that we do that for those of you today that received Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's not to offend you, but the Bible says that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are a spiritual babe in Christ. And that's a blessing because now you've got your whole future in front of you and God wants to just blow your mind and do incredible things in your life. And so as a part of that, we have, Pastor Tommy has written a number of years ago, a book that we have available called The Next Book. And we have those, book, those books today available for you for free for those of you that accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And so after this service is over with and after we dismiss you, we want to personally invite all of you that made that commitment today to go right to the center of our lobby. There are folks that will have orange shirts and orange bags just like this one that you can take that and go home with it and read through it and look at it so that you will know exactly what your next steps are. Pastor Tommy, I heard him say it earlier. He made a personal appeal and plea for you to come back. Listen, you don't eat once a week. You eat every single day in order to live and survive. Well, God's word is meat. And so we want to invite you to make it a habit to get God's word as a part of your life. That's the only way you're going to be able to grow. And for many people that are asking for things to change in your life, you got to be able to eat more than once a week. Amen? So we want to invite you to do that. Now, listen, you've heard it said already. We want to strongly invite you to come back next week. Montel Jordan is going to be with us. And we're going to dig deep and deal with the truth of where marriage and relationships are. So this is your personal invitation to come and be a part of that. We've got food that's available outside in the lobby for free. Take as much as you want. Enjoy it. Hang out with us. But we also want to invite you, please be sensitive that we've got another service that's coming in right after you. And that one is probably going to be just as full as this one. The last thing that I'll say is that um, we have lots and lots of kids that are in our kids wing, King's Wing today, Kids Wing today. And so in just a moment, I'm going to actually ask all of you that are parents that have kids in our kids ministry to stand first. Everyone else will remain seated. All of those with parent, that are parents with kids, you'll stand and then be dismissed. Everybody should not be moving just yet. We're going to leave together, please. Hold on for just a second. We're going to do it together so that there's some order to it. And so parents, when you stand up and leave, we're going to ask you my left, your right. We've got folks that are going to direct you over in this wing over here to go right through a little shortcut there to get your precious little cargo. We just want to make sure we do it decently and in order. Amen? All right, so one of the ways that we leave here crossover every single week, we put our mission statement up. It's a clear, visible reminder, call to action of what God calls us to be and to do as we leave his house headed to our house. They're going to put it on the screens there on the count of three. I want to invite you guys to leave, uh, read this together, and then we're going to dismiss in an orderly fashion. Start at the top. One, two, three. Our mission is to empower people to discover, develop, and display Jesus Christ in every area of their lives. Everybody have an incredible rest of your day and an awesome rest of your Easter week. God bless you.
A story they're writing today A wall that they're climbing You can carry the past on your shoulders You can start over regrets No matter what you've gone through, Jesus He gave it all to save you